Welcome to the JS Self-Care Mind, Body, and Soul podcast, a weekly conversation about self-care, personal development, and all the small decisions we can make to become the best possible versions of ourselves. I am your host, Janelle. I am a social worker and a self-care life coach based out of New York. For more information, visit my website at jsselfcare.org. I want to welcome my new listeners, and I also want to welcome my returning listeners. If you can please share this episode because there is someone in this world who needs to listen to this episode. I also want to personally thank you for making the JS Self-Care Mind, Body, and Soul podcast part of your weekly routine. I truly, truly appreciate you. They say you teach what you most need to learn. So this week, I learned a lot. You can't love the red flags out of your relationships. Let's embrace our sixth sense. That is called the sniffing out the red flags from a mile away. No, our sixth sense is trusting our intuition. Relationships are complicated, so it makes sense that some so-called deal breakers should be ignored. But some quirks are such big red flags that you could not only see a mile away, but the flags are flapping their wings so hard like a violent bird. Red flags need to be acknowledged, whether you choose to work together on a compromise or you may choose to accept that this person is not for you. You must understand that you can't love the red flags out of a person. You don't have that magical power. The self-care thing to do is write down your non-negotiables when it comes to relationships. Once you understand what you are willing to accept, from what you're not willing to accept. When certain red flags are present, you will know you can't change this. This is who they are. Pay attention because you can't love the red flags out of a person. People we meet show us who they are as we show them who we are. We see the red flags which could result into abusive behaviors and we believe in our heart of hearts that we can change them. I've said this over and over again. You can't change anyone. People have to want to change. And if people don't want to change, it is their right to remain the same. It's up to you now to decide if this is something you want to be a part of. So once again, I say you can't love the red flags out of a person. Sorry, but not sorry. I'll in those Early stages of building romance, we are all at our best. Sometimes the excitement and infatuation can blind you to everything else. It can blind you so much that you would think that you can love the red flags out of a person. The blinder can make red flags almost impossible to spot. But think about what you've learned from past relationships. You know more than you realize. Staying keen to these red flags... Now, which can help you avoid hurt in the future. Here are five ways to spot relationship red flags. Don't lie to yourself. I know you are sick of being single. I know I am. And I know some may be sick of being with the person you're with. I know it makes everything more fun and exciting when you think you may have finally met someone with serious romantic potential. Believe me, I know, but because you so badly want it to work, you may be more vulnerable to ignoring things that seem easy to brush off. Don't do it. If you lie to yourself now, you will have to live with it for the duration of the relationship. So don't lie to yourself. Our next one is trust yourself. If something strikes you as off, then chances are something is off. Trust your intuition. I know you'll want to interview all your friends, twisting and turning your odd feelings in every direction in hopes of finding reassurance that you're overreacting. Have you ever told your friends, tell me I'm bugging, but I'm getting a feeling he is in this entanglement or a situation or whatever they call it. I know I've said that to my friends before. Have you? But don't write yourself off so quickly. If something doesn't feel right, you don't have to end things on the spot. And maybe the oddness is something you can learn to live with. But don't underestimate your intuition. 
You know more than you think you know. Trust yourself. The next thing we need to do is ask about past relationships. I personally sway on this one, but by asking about the past relationships does help you better understand the person you are with. I sometimes say, I don't want to know a person's past, but then I say, I want to know what a person didn't like about the person that made their relationship toxic or they realized they were not meant to be together. I can say this one thing I can pretty much guarantee is that one way or another, History always repeats itself. Guess what? Not just for your relationship, but also for you. History will repeat itself. So even though I sway with this one, I may, I need my listeners to find out what happened in your partner's past relationships. How does he or she talk about past rela- relational dynamics? Listen to your partner's relationship traumas. Your partner complaints about their past relationship may hint at future complaints about you. Fourth thing we need to do is pay attention. How does this person do life? What I mean by this is watch how your partner makes meaning of difficult situations past and present. Is your partner learning and growing? Does he or she take responsibility for past mistakes? The answers to these questions will give you important information about how he or she approaches life with you. The most dangerous scenario is if this person often paints himself or herself as moseying along, living a quiet life in the clouds through no fault of his or her own. Bad luck and mean, crazy people continuing messing things up for him or her. Continuing seeing life's difficulties as an outside one's outside of oneself, never a good sign, never a good sign. Always watch out for lies, even the harmless ones. If this person will lie to others, what do you think they will do to you? The next and last one for the relationship red flags, I want you to understand that self-care is important. As you all know, I am a huge advocate for taking care of self at all costs. Everyone has red flags. That does not make you unlikable. Self-work can eliminate red flags that you possess. Don't ever settle for less because you feel lonely. Don't ever sacrifice your self-worth to please others. There is someone for everyone. Trust me, I too struggle with being lonely, but I refuse to settle. Know what type of person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Don't settle for misery over self-love. Let's jump into some red flags to look out for in toxic relationships. The first one is frequent aggressive behavior. When you are in a relationship or when you meet someone and you witness aggressive behaviors, take heed to the sign Also, don't ignore the behaviors when it comes to them being aggressive. Living with an angry person makes daily life unpredictable because life with this type of person could be you walking on eggshells. Who wants to do that every day all day? Living with someone who exhibits aggressive behaviors could not only have you walking on eggshells, but it can lead to physical aggression towards you if you make them angry enough. In the beginning of a relationship, the aggression may not be toward you, but trust and believe at some point it will. The aggression turns on you once you make a commitment to the person. The red flags are always there in the beginning. We sometimes get so caught up in the changing a person, we tell ourselves that we will not make them mad and we will love the red flags out of them and they will change. So not true. If you frequently hear about your partner talking about how angry they are at the entire world more than their happiness, take heed this red flag at this red flag because you don't want to be around an angry person at all. Or you don't want to be around them all daggone day, I could tell you that. I know I don't want to be around that energy all day. If you are with someone who ends arguments with threats of leaving the relationship like for instance I can't take this shit no more instead of we are both angry right now we should talk about this later 
is the right thing to do. If your partner allows the argument to linger for days without a resolution, this is a clear sign that they cannot regulate their emotions, which is a critical skill for resolving conflicts in a constructive way. Another red flag is when your partner repeatedly says that you are ruining their life or tend to blame you for their problems and mishaps. Listen to them because this shows you that they can't take responsibility for their own actions and choices. Just remember, frequent aggressive behavior is a clear red flag. Don't ignore it. Our next red flag indicator is if you're with someone and they have lack of empathy or remorse. A red flag is when there is a reason to feel sad or grieve and your partner lacks empathy. For example, if someone close to you or them passes away and your partner's response is, I don't know why you crying and all upset. Everyone dies. Major red flag alert. This tells you that your partner does not know how to process their emotions. If you are explaining something to your partner or advocating for yourself and your partner is not able to say, I can understand why you might feel that way about this situation, that's another red flag that the person you're with lacks empathy. If your partner is not able to apologize and show genuine regret when their actions have upset you, regardless if they meant harm or not, that is a red flag. That means they can't take ownership for their actions or if they don't feel guilty for the things they do. That's a clear red flag. They don't give a shit about anything, not even your feelings. Did we really think we could love the red flag out of that? How you want to be with someone whom ex who doesn't express empathy? You can't want to be with someone like that. Lack of empathy and remorse is a clear red flag. Manipulation and deceit. If your partner makes you say, in my bugging, I know I just put this right here. That's a sure red flag, or should I say you have been gaslit. Gaslighting is one form of deceit that has become a familiar to many people. Essentially, gaslighting is communicating. The facts are distorted or withheld to their advantage, leaving you questioning your memory. I know, shit, am I going crazy? Being gaslit destroys your trust in the other person and can even make you question your sanity. This is a red flag and you don't want to go crazy or lose it. If you ever feel as if you are bugging because you know what it is and they make you feel as if you are bugging out, you are being gaslit. Run. Manipulation and deceit is a clear red flag. Our next one is called problems with rules. Do you think you should have rules in your relationship? Well, let's see. If you are dating or are in a relationship with someone who requires that everything is done in the way that they deem to be acceptable and has no respect for your personal preferences, red flag, that means they are a, a control freak and they may have some OCD issue behaviors going on. If you find, your, find yourself saying, if it ain't your way, it's the highway, that's a problem. You can't love the selfishness out of a person. You can't be with someone who feels justified in having everything done their way or to their standards. Problems with rules. Yes, we should have problems with rules. If your partner tries to drive a wedge between you and your family and friends, it is a clear red flag. They are trying to isolate you from the world. If your partner says, you know your family is jealous of you and our relationship or jealous of you, stop to think what they're really trying to do. Think about it. You've been around your family all your life. Why shouldn't you love them for who they are? Run, run far away from the relationship that drive you away from your loved ones. If you stay, you will find yourself alone and away from the ones who love you. Don't worry. Your partner will be happy, though, because they have you all to themselves so they can manipulate you without others around to tell you that they are controlling you. You can't love this red flag out of a person. If your partner tries to drive a wedge between you and your family and friends, 
it's a clear red flag that they are trying to isolate you from the world. Run. This is a classic control tactic. Our next one is if you are with someone and they describe all of their exes as crazy, I want you to think about it. If they are all crazy, what that make you? Red flag, red flag. Some relationships do end badly, but I want you to think about who is the crazy one, them or you. I used to call my ex-husband the crazy one when we first broke up, but now I take responsibility for my part in the marriage ending. Guess what? We are happily divorced and the best co-parents in the world. Think about it. We would intentionally be with someone who is batshit crazy, but we intentionally, I don't know. If a person expresses that all of their relationships was crazy, maybe it could be them and their behaviors. So ask them, what made their past relationships so crazy? If you are with someone and they describe all of their exes as crazy, I really want you to think about it. If they're crazy, what does that make your partner? That's a red flag. Think about your past relationships and your present relationships. If you are with someone who calls you derogatory names when y'all in an argument, run for the hills. It only gets worse. First of all, let me say this. Your name is the name that you were given by your parents or loved ones. Always remember that. You better put some respect on my name as I say that. Derogatory names is one of my non-negotiables. Those names sometimes include, you stupid dumb bitch, you asshole, you stupid, you get my drift. Those horrible names that make you feel less than a man or a woman is a clear red flag. Be wary when someone can flip a switch and transform into a unrecognizable monster when y'all disagree. It's a clear sign of disrespect. You are only the people who named you. If you wish someone who calls you derogatory names when y'all in an argument, run for the hills. It only gets worse. It doesn't get better. Demand your respect or exit the relationship. If your partner has no worth ethic, if your partner think the job is going to come for them, run like a bat out of hell. You are, you are not a grown ass person's mother or father. If a person is behind on life milestones or doesn't quite have their shit together on the surface, what matters more than their situation is how they feel about it. Are they just unmotivated as hell, in which case next? Or are they only behind because of a big sacrifice or setback in their life? We all move in different personal timelines, after all. Better yet, is this person working hard every day to build the kind of life they actually want for themselves if they don't like their current reality? Attitudes make all the difference. You have to bring something to the table. You can't be with someone sitting playing video games or having dreams of being a 40 plus year old rapper. Support your partner, but don't have them sitting waiting for Def Jam to sign them. If you don't like your current job or the people you work with, find another job. Don't quit until you have something to fall back on. If your goal is to become an entrepreneur, don't quit your day job. That pays your bills and takes care of your family. What I say, work on your dreams and goals while you're still being able to pursue your dreams and goals. If your partner has no worth ethic, if your partner think the job is going to come for them, run like a bat out of hell. Red flag and you can't love the red flag out of them. Our next one is if your partner is secretive about the small things, think about when it comes to those big things. If they're secretive about their finances, baby daddies, baby mamas, their credit score, you better watch it because imagine what else they can be holding back. If you are in a solid relationship with someone, you should know their secrets. If they're hiding money and have money problems, you should know about that. You can only imagine what else they could be hiding. You want to be with someone who has the capability to be vulnerable and tell you all their secrets from money problems, children, finances, properties, everything. Just remember that if your partner is secretive about the small things, think about when it comes to those big things. Just think about it. Is that something you want to be into? That's a red flag. 
if you met them in a relationship and they cheated with you, when you get them, guess what they're going to do? Think about it. What do you think is going to happen to you? I'll wait. First of all, how can you put yourself in a position to play the role of number two? That's the first question. Not being a hypocrite did that dumb shit before. Never, ever will I play the role of number two again. There is absolutely no benefit in playing number two. It only brings heartache. It might be wise to learn a little more about this person's romantic history because there's a good chance that every relationship they've ever had have overlapped with the next one, in which case it's only a matter of time before they cheat on you. If you are not happy with someone, leave. This is America, not a third world country where marriages and relationships are arranged before you're born. When you decide a relationship has ended, don't jump right into the next relationship. Take some time to be alone so that you can regroup and think about your faults in the relationship so you know what areas of change you need to make with yourself. If you met them in a relationship and they cheated with you, when you get them, what do you think is going to happen to you? Now, what do you think they will do to you? I tell you what will happen with you. They will cheat on you as soon as they see the things going left or getting tough because they can't be alone. Nope, they will cheat with the next one. If your partner demands your phone, email, and social media passwords, red flag, trust issues. For starters, why would they want to date someone they don't trust? And what does that say about whatever untrust where the habits or temptations they might be projecting onto you. Checking your Facebook inbox in peace without someone mouth breathing over your shoulder is practically a basic right. You are 100% entitled to autonomy and privacy. So are they. Have you said, let me give them my password. I have nothing to hide. If you have, that's a clear sign that you're trying to love the red flag out of them. They have to be willing to trust you. If they have issues with trust, that's something they have to work through. Sometimes the reason why people struggle with trust in others is because they've been hurt in their childhood or in their adulthood that they never dealt with. You can't love the trust issues out of someone. They have to work on their trust issues and ask themselves why they don't trust people they are dating. If your partner demands your phone, email, and social media passwords, Red flag, trust issues. You may want to rethink whether or not this is something you may want to be in. If they refuse to make your relationship public or they refuse to introduce you to their mother, run for the hills. Some people simply don't like splashing their personal life onto social media or even talking much about their feelings with friends. I get that, but that's different from flat out hiding your partnership which is about as glaring red as a red flag can get. If you are a secret, is that really your man or woman? Think about it. Have you ever heard, uh, heard, I don't want people in my business, so don't tell them we are together? If so, that's a clear sign that they don't want to be exclusive with you. They refuse to make your relationship public or they refuse to introduce you to their mother. Run from the hill. If your partner has a different idea than you of what it means to be faithful, please ask your partner what their meaning is of being in a relationship before you commit to them. What if your partner thinks it's totally chill to hook up with someone else as long as they aren't like in love with them? Or what if that they think it's fine to carry on intense emotional texts and conversations with someone else as long as they never physically cheat. Heck, maybe one of you wants a open relationship and the other will never be okay with the idea. These are difference to catch before they cause lots of pain. If you are in a relationship, you most definitely can be friends with opposite sex, but boundaries need to be in place. If a boundary is crossed, I always say, have a consequence in place. No form of cheating should be tolerated. No form of cheating should be encouraged. 
If cheating is something you are not in agreement with, you have to have the conversation with your partner surrounding cheating. I always say don't assume a person knows what cheating is. We all know when we assume we make complete asses of, out of ourselves. You surely can't love cheating out of a person. If your partner has a different idea than you of what it means to be faithful, please ask your partner what their meaning is of being in a relationship before you commit to them. And don't assume anything. Discuss what relationship means to be and what it means to be in a committed relationship. If you and your partner got nothing to talk about, lack of communication, chemistry is important. Connection is also important. When talking about your days, your sexual desires, your future hopes, or even your vacation desires, can you and your partner mutually express yourselves? Think about it. If your partner shuts down when you bring up emotional material or changes the topic when the subject gets deep, take note. Though you may not share your deepest secrets in the beginning, when a couple is good, a good match, both people find it easy to be open with one another. You want to share and learn more about your partner. If you're questioning your compatibility with your partner, finding that you quickly run out of things to talk about together might be a sign that you just aren't right for each other. Especially if you are just in the dating realm, conversations should flow naturally. You should be talking about your likes and dislikes. Boundaries. If there is no communication in a relationship, then there is no relationship. If you're having really one-sided conversations, example given, your partner only talks about themselves and you provide all the support, it's not a good sign either. It could show that your partner is incredibly self-centered or they might be overly dependent on your on you for your support. Energy vampires suck the life out of you. They suck your emotional strength and you need to be supported. You got nothing to talk about and it's lack of, of communication chemistry. It's important that you look at that as a red flag because you guys should be connecting and the way to connect is not only through our body parts, but through communication. It's if you can't be yourself in a relationship, that's a clear red flag that you should not be in that relationship. The best thing about long-term commitment is having someone who knows you inside and outside and loves you anyway. Love you for who you are, not for what they want you to be. Notice, if you are putting on an act with your partner or if you find yourself consumed with saying the right thing or doing the right thing in their presence, you are not being your authentic self. Don't be phony and fake to please your partner. If you can't be yourself in a relationship, that's a clear red flag that you should not be in that relationship. Here is our last one. If you notice your partner is still obsessed with their ex, that's a red flag and it's something you can't love out of them. If you're dating someone who just got out of a long-term relationship, you may be the rebound. Rebound relationships rarely work out. And one of the reasons is because your partner is still fixated on their ex still. It's all right for your partner to bring them up or still feel a little gloom about their previous relationship. But it is a limit to that. For instance, if they still have pictures of their ex on their phone, that's a no-no. Look at their social media profiles frequently. That is a no-no. That shows you how much they're missing their past relationship. Always make the ex the topic of the conversation, especially when they are comparing them to you. No, 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 no. Claim to be friends with the ex and talk to them regularly. Like, really? They don't have to be enemies either, but a boundary needs to be in place. Or if you feel like you're just a substitute, then this may be a reason to end the relationship. You are not their ex. And if the if your partner doesn't move on from their ex, then they may rush things or leave you before you aren't prepared. When you are leaving someone or if you recently ended your relationship with someone, make sure you don't jump into another relationship. Make sure you work out the kinks to get the person you are with. It's typically not until the demise of a relationship 
that we gain the clearest perspective about what actually transpired, where things went wrong, warning signs we may have missed while we were caught up in the passion of a new romance or deep into a relationship in which we've invested so much time and effort into working suddenly become glaringly apparent. But as we've navigated a new romance and getting to know someone, it's important to look out for red flags in a relationship. These specific signs are telling of problematic behaviors and tendencies that could hurt you down the line. A red flag is a good intuitive image to help you process what you're really feeling. The red flags noted in this podcast are relevant to relationship satisfaction and in particular to the risk of relationship crisis. Any of these behaviors discussed except for physical aggression might happen on occasion, such as when highly stressed or exhausted. Telling a lie to avoid hurting someone's feelings, not showing empathy when exhausted, or wanting some things done in certain ways are all normal. The red flags come about when the behavior is constant. If you are living with someone who regularly shows any of these problematic behaviors, you are encouraged to talk with trusted family members, friends, and or mental health professionals. Talking through these types of situations with someone who has your best interests in mind can provide the perspective and the support needed to cope in the best way possible. If you're just starting a relationship with someone who demonstrates these behaviors, don't ignore the red flag. If you spot warning signs that your relationship isn't quite as happy as you think it should be, then try to talk to your partner about what you're feeling. This might be helpful if you want to resolve some small issues that you think might make your relationship better and stronger. However, if the red flags that you spot are pointing towards an unhealthy or toxic relationship or you feel unsafe, then the healthiest and safest thing to do might be to end the relationship. What to do if you experience these red flags? We all flawed people and your partner is going to have some flaws or traits you don't like. If you experience a few red flags, it may not necessarily be a reason for you to cut ties just yet. They may not be aware of their behavior. Talking to your partner about their problems is the best initial approach. For example, if your partner seems overly jealous, confront them about their behavior. Point out that they have nothing to worry about and you don't like how they are behaving. Do it in a way that isn't accusatory and explains how you feel. If they're willing to make a change, they will. Listen and try improving their behavior. If they get aggressive, then maybe it's time to end the relationship and try to find someone who does want to grow with you. Know your boundaries. When you're in a verbal, emotional, psychological, abusive relationship, trust your gut. Know when it's time for your partnership to end. There are certain circumstances that are intolerable. For example, psychological and certainly physical abuse is unacceptable. If these sorts of mistreatments are happening in your relationship, you need to safely leave. You don't have to be with a significant other for the rest of your life if they're not treating you well. If they have no respect for their partner, you don't have to tolerate that. If you don't give your personal space, that is a sign of disrespect to you and your relationship. For example, if you say the words, I need a break, I feel triggered during a heated conversation and they keep talking about it, that's not okay. They are violating your boundaries. It's important to trust your gut when it comes to setting boundaries. If you tell your partner how you feel and they're unaccountable for their actions, that's a bad sign. In the throes of a new relationship, it can be easy to put aside obvious red flags. It's okay to know your limits and learn to trust what's inside of you. If a person lacks respect and you're not one of the most important people in their life, then it's okay to draw a boundary with them. 
Being in a relationship means caring about your partner and their feelings. And if you're not getting that care, it's time to break free. Watch out for manipulation. There are people who want to manipulate you. Overly obvious verbal emotional abuse is wrong. If the time your relationship takes up makes you feel exhausted, that's a bad sign. You could be spending energy trying to fix something that will stay broken. There are people that don't give others personal space, and that's an issue. It's important for you to focus on your mental health, and a person who holds your power over you is not healthy for you. There is real life, and the reality is that there are people who are out to hurt others. You don't have to settle for being treated poorly. There are relationship people who prefer to be with someone even if the dynamic is toxic. Don't stay with someone just because you don't want to be alone. It's not worth the stress and heartache. You can find someone who treats you well and doesn't manipulate your feelings for their personal gain. If you told someone multiple times to stop doing the behavior and they don't listen to your boundary, that's a problem. The minute Relation could range from mild to the overly obvious verbal emotional abuse. A manipulative person lacks integrity and lacks the ability to see what they're doing to you. You don't have to let your partners boss you around because you're scared to leave the relationship. Advocate for yourself. It can be difficult to speak up when you feel unheard. Some people are focused on their voices and forget to listen to others. If you're in a relationship where your partner isn't listening, it's okay to point out that you have things to say. If you advocate for yourself, you will feel empowered. It can contribute to your personal growth and connections where you speak up and your partner brushes you off. That's a red flag. That's something isn't right for you. It's crucial to speak up for yourself. If you're afraid to tell the other person how you feel because of their reaction, that could be a sign that the relationship is not good, not a good fit for you. You need to be able to trust your partner and know that they care and want to hear your feelings. Everyone has a unique perspective and they might disagree with some things that you say, but your feelings are real and valid. A caring partner will be there to listen. If they don't want to hear from you, remember that. You deserve to be with someone who values your emotions. Your personal growth matters. Guilt isn't a reason to stay. Some people make others feel guilty. The kind of person that seems obvious in their attempts to guilt trip, you know what they are doing. The behavior may be a learned way or a habit. The behavior could stem from their childhood or they've used to it, used it to get what they want in previous relationships and it has worked in their past. Trust is a crucial part of a relationship. Some individuals have abandonment issues and those concerns are real. Just because you're afraid of your partner leaving don't mean you need to make them feel guilty so that they stay. That will inevitably cause resentment or anger in the connection. You need to learn to trust your partner. If you sense that there's a lack of trust from your partner, you need to address that situation. Trusting your significant other is crucial. You may be in a relationship where your significant other doesn't seem to let you be yourself. If an individual lacks respect for you and doesn't treat you as one of the most important people in their life, that's a bad sign. There could be a lack of communication between the two of you, and that's a potential problem. Make sure that you advocate for yourself and you can use positive psychology to help. You may not know what that is, but a therapist can teach you. Positive psychology is a way of looking at oneself in a good light. It can help you figure out how to see yourself in a favorable way. If there's a life lesson you can take from being in a toxic relationship, it's not your fault. There are significant people in our lives, but it doesn't mean that these individuals will stay forever. It's crucial to know when someone needs to leave your life. You can't have to let some guilt trip you. 
into staying in a relationship where you're unhappy. This is your life and you need to trust your intuition. An individual who deliberately guilt trips you to stay is abusive and integrity and lacks respect for you as a person. If your partner disregards your feelings, if you don't feel comfortable, then you can leave the relationship. Your intuitive image of your partner is meaningful. Many people describe romantic relationships as grounding. There are the sort of connections that you deserve. Trust that you know who and what is best for you and don't let another person tell you otherwise. While I hope you love listening to and learning from this podcast, it is not meant to be a substitute for mental health treatment. For those of you who are ready to get started by talking to a self-care life coach who can answer all of your questions about self-care, I want you to schedule a free consultation at jsselfcare.org. If mental health treatment is needed, please don't hesitate to contact a therapist in your area. Self-care is important and necessary. Take care of you and continue to put you first no matter what. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, and share. For daily doses of self-care affirmations and notes to self, make sure you join the JS Self-Care Social Media Tribe on most social media platforms. Social media links will be placed in this episode's notes. 